So, um, what kind of things do you like to do at home? <laughs> Melt stuff. So this is what we make today. To break this down, we are going to use a cloth simulation and with the help of geometry nodes, we are going to tell the simulation where it has to work and where not. And this is exactly the node setup which we are not going to use. As complex as the animation looks, the node setup required for this animation is just this much. And now before we dive right into it, the Black Friday sale of my courses is still going on until the 6th of December. Never a good time to buy my courses at 50% off. With that being said, let's get started. Alright folks, so let's begin. Let's start by understanding the main principle behind this technique. So here I have a sphere and a plane. Let's add a collision simulation to the plane and add a simple cloth simulation to our sphere. And the moment you press play, the sphere is going to fall down like a cloth. But what if we want some part of the sphere to just hang in the air? Alright, for something like that, what I will do is go into my edit mode and maybe select this patch. And in my vertex groups, I will assign these vertices, go into my class simulation. There should be an option called shape and pin group and just pin this group. And now if you play the animation, only that part of the vertices will just hang in the air. So that's one way of selecting vertices. The other is if you press Ctrl Tab and go into your weight paint, you will see these are the vertices that are being assigned right now. But if you just press left click, you can select more. Let's select something here, somewhere there, this part and this part. All right. Now, if you go back to object mode and play the animation, only that part of our object is just hung up in the air and rest is falling down. But what if I told you that there is a third way, the third magical way from which you can create a beautiful animation like this. So this will involve geometry nodes as I have shown in the intro. And this will be ridiculously easy if you just follow along. All right, so let's begin. Okay, so let's start by adding an external object, a UV sphere somewhere there roughly. And I will go here and give the display as bound and sphere here so we just see through it select the sphere press new and add in a stored named attribute there plug it in between and go into here data add in a new group name it anything i will name it what and come back here and name this group here what all right now we want the proximity data from this sphere to here all right so let's gather in geometry proximity and get the sphere inside our node tree select it here get in a map node divide distance by scale so this small three node setup will grant us the access of this sphere scale and location all right let's plug this data in here color run and Plug this in the value part and now let's just go back to our class simulation and there should be a pin group word here select this and now if you play the animation nothing will happen that's because our geonodes part is happening after the class simulation this should be reversed let's plug this up and now if you play the animation it will work correctly also just Go to your cache here and increase this number to somewhere there. And now if you play it, you can play with it as long as you want. So this is a fairly good game you have made in Blender. Congratulations. And now let's give it some more color to it. All right. The part which is going down should have different color and the parts that are sticking up should have different color. All right. I will just pause the animation here and I'm, I'm going to use another stored name attribute and for this part I will use a vector point you can choose any but I'm going to use point to be precise and I will use color ramp one more time and I will plug this information to value here all right now I will go into my shade editor go into my material 
you press new this is material 001 also you set material use 001 if you add in an attribute you can use this attribute name it col not what col you can name it any, anything col is not compulsory and in a color ramp let's feed it in here and you will see something is happening all right let's just tighten it up that part all right something like that all right now if you press ctrl tab if you go into your weight paint mode you will see something is happening here also these are the the red part are the vertices are, that are being controlled that are being hung up in the air all right so let's just tighten that up also just make sure that these two parts look look identical i mean if you go into your object mode again the, that part is red make sure that part is also red here somewhere there if you go to your object mode i think that is correct all right let's get back to our shader editor and now let's just get rid of the color ramp i don't think we need it here right now so for now let's add in a mix shader and use this as a mask between principal bstf and a glass shader maybe emission up to you let's use an emission here give it some color some details i think we should just reverse it up the hung up part would be somewhere there all right so now let's also spice this up by adding a glass shader and let's just increase this up also shade smooth so we have something like that now and if you play the animation right now you will see the i think we have set it up like roughly right now i think it is working quite nice you can also fiddle with it so you have complete control over the values something like that let's also test the render view here i will get these off and let's see all right i think this is it you have made it and now let's just experiment with it i mean what else we can do with this if you go into control tab weight paint mode you can see that is a part that is being controlled by our proximity all right so what if we get in a noise texture let's plug this here and let's see what happens all right the red part is that let's play with it let's get our scale to 0.1 maybe let's not 0.1 let's increase it up a bit let's tighten this up now the blue part will go down and red part will hang up let's see let's go into our object mode and let's click it up and that is exactly what's happening right now let's also increase the vertex marks to be somewhere 20 right now so that it falls really down all right let's increase the quality steps maybe something like that and now if you go into your 4d get in a scene type node apply it to w and you will see that this value is changing and you have a boogie bomb something like that a weird animation i think you can even plug this in the color ramp here for the color let's see what's happening in the color values you will have to adjust it on your own i think i think that's the part and that is it i hope you enjoyed and i hope you learned something new so i will just quickly break down how i made the intro animation so first of all i downloaded this model and as you can see in the edit mode it has a very tense geometry so first of all if you have a supercomputer you can go ahead like this those who don't you can try a decimate modifier and use 0 0.03 like i used and apply it all right and then you will have this model with such subtle geometry rest assured every step is, step is the same and the uh, different thing what i did was i used a wind force here and i used these cloth settings in my original render the, the quality steps are 30 and the vertex mass is 0.1 all right for the sake of this tutorial i mean for the animation the animation in the viewport let's keep it to 5 and my wind force is 35,000 to the right if i play it right now it is something like this my fps are quite fucked right now but everything else looks great 
all right i think that's it if you have any problem just comment down below and like and subscribe until next time